good morning everyone i don't know about you but we're still hunkered down today i had a doctor's appointment today in park river and i thought no i'm not gonna drive 40 minutes in this crap um it doesn't really like look that bad out but i guess the roads are really bad and we get periods of wind around here <clears throat> and i think if i could have made it to adams probably going to park river would have been a little bit easier but it wasn't a mandatory uh, doctor appointment so I'm not going out on the roads no travel is advised yet so I hope you guys are all home safe warm uh, maybe getting into some words of the Lord that's what I've been doing so so we will start out <clears throat> this morning um, by saying uh, God bless and thank you guys for being here with me um, yep I got dressed today feels good um, and uh, just kind of taking in the weather I tell you so we'll start out with our acts of kindness here we have a lot of them again tis the season uh, my friend Tracy from back in Minnesota wants to put a, a big thank you out to her son for plowing out their yard and driveway and filling up their wood boiler um, she says she's going to pay him in chili and artichoke dip when she starts feeling better. <laughs> what better way to show your acts of kindness than to cook for somebody, right? I think so anyway. Um, I seen this um, on Facebook. I, um, a Hutchinson, Minnesota man builds and gives away candy canes and he's done this for years and they are now in 18 different states uh he was diagnosed with parkinson's a few years back and um needed to uh obviously keep going and and uh, this makes him feel better he's still able to do woodworking and makes these candy canes and gives them away god bless you uh, the Hoyles, my friend Barb Hoyles and her family, uh, we prayed for them um, last week with the loss of her brother, but I seen on Facebook that they just had so many supportive friends and family and had a great celebration of life for Barb's brother. And it is very, very much appreciated. So thank you all for, for showing your support and being there for them and, and uh, putting on a great celebration of life. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver, Juju Smith, I don't know if you guys are into football, I am though, um, for the season here, his act of kindness is he paid off $10,000 in layaways for people at Christmas. How awesome is that to just go into a, I don't know what stores have layaways now, I know, I remember Kmart did when my kids were little, um, but go into a store and just say, you know, hey, I'd like to do this. And then the person um, would be notified maybe or come pick up and their Christmas gifts would be all paid off. Unbelievable. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So um, New London Spicer, my um, high school that I went to high school with, um, shared this. Uh, Mrs. Lindahl's vocational class volunteers each week packing food and delivering the packages to each of our buildings for the Wildcat Backpack, Wildcat Backpack Program through the link. Remember the link we, um, we shared, uh, we donated to them last year. Um, this year they had a desire to do even more. They collected donations to sponsor a family for Christmas through the link and Mrs. Lindahl shared these students and their families were enthusiastic givers they are truly sharing the love and joy that this Christmas brings thank you for all that you are doing to make our schools and communities a better place thank you New London Spicer thank you so much for being um, being that being what you are being what you are God bless you um, I seen this as well. The Polar Express, you guys have probably seen that, the train that lights all up, made a stop at the children's hospital yesterday carrying gifts um, and had Santa on the train. 
It says thank you to Greg uh, Semke for helping support Santa's visit through his Christmas in July charity. The magical experience for each kid started with a special visit from a child, uh, from a child life train conductor to punch the child's ticket. Child life and expressive therapies relies completely on donations and philanthrop philanthropic support from groups such as Christmas in July to serve pediatric patients at Marshfield Children's Hospital and in Mar Marshfield Children's Outpatient Care. Wow, what a way to brighten the kids' season, huh? God bless you guys as well. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see, I have to look through my papers here, you guys. We have some fun stuff here. My message isn't real long today, so uh, we can we can do this. So I might have read this to you before, but, you know, maybe you missed it. But this is pretty cool. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So a man was asked to paint a boat. He brought his paint and brushes and began to paint the boat a bright red, as the owner asked. While painting, he noticed a small hole in the hull and just quietly repaired it. When he finished painting, he received his money and left. The next day, the owner of the boat came to the painter and presented him with a nice check, much higher than the payment for painting. The painter was surprised and said, you've already paid me for painting the boat, sir. But the, the man said, but this is not for the paint job. It's for repairing the hole in my boat. Ah, but it was such a small service. Certainly it's not worth paying me such a high amount for something so insignificant. The man said, my dear friend, you do not understand. Let me tell you what happened. When I asked you to paint the boat, I forgot to mention to you about the hole. When the boat dried, my kids immediately took the boat and went on a fishing trip. They did not know that there was a hole in the boat, and I was not at home at that time to warn them of this. When I returned and noticed they had taken the boat, I was desperate because I remembered that the boat had a hole. Imagine my relief and joy when I saw them returning from fishing. Then I examined the boat and found that you had repaired the hole. You see, now what you did, you saved the life of my children. I do not have enough money to pay your small good deed. So no matter who, when or how, Continue to help sustain, wipe tears, listen attentively, and carefully repair all the leaks you find. You never know when one is in need of us or when God holds a pleasant surprise for us to be helpful and important to someone. Along the way, you may have repaired nu numerous boat holes for several people without realizing how many lives you've saved. Make a difference. Be the best you. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Um, a friend of mine shared this with me. And since we're tis the season, I, I thought I would share it with you. Maybe you've seen this before too, but it, it's just kind of neat. So the partridge in a pear tree is Jesus Christ. Two turtle doves are the Old and New Testaments. Three French hens stand for faith, hope, and love. The four calling birds are the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The five golden rings recalled the Torah or law, the, five, the first five books of the Old Testament. The six geese laying stand for the six days of creation. Seven swans of swimming re represent the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, contribution, leadership, and mercy. The eight maids of milking are the eight beatitudes. Nine ladies dancing are the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The ten lords of leaping are the ten commandments. The eleven pipers piping stand for the eleven faithful disciples. The twelve drummers drumming symbolize the twelve points of belief in the Apostles' Creed. So there, my friends, is your history lesson for today. Merry Christmas. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I've seen it before, but I love it. I love it again. 
Um, so my last one here is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're not going to visit the Christ candle till next week. Um, so today we're just going to be kind of talking about our feelings, our emotions during the holiday season here. There's so many. And uh, so I want to read you this. <clears throat> we tend to think Christmas is about merrymaking. But life is hard sometimes, isn't it? I can't think of anyone who isn't struggling through something. I have a friend attempting to repair her marriage after betrayal. I have a friend with aging parents and a father in and out of the hospital. I have a friend struggling to parent her young adult children, trying to find the balance between helping and letting go while watching them flounder through some very hard circumstances. I have a friend who lost a coworker to suicide. I have a friend with a mother who stopped talking to her and she's reeling over abandonment in the middle of her own adult life. We're all struggling in some way. Then Christmas sweeps in with its twinkly lights and cozy commercials and comfort foods and we don't feel much like making merry sometimes. Sometimes we just feel sad. Life doesn't look the way it is supposed to look. And everywhere we turn, commercials play Christmas music and beautiful images of tender family moments and all those twinkly lights and we think, my life isn't anything like that, and it hurts. But isn't that what Christmas is all about? I saw something the other day about how the first Christmas was simple. But was it? I bet Mary didn't think so. Traveling on a donkey at full term. All those people milling around and no place to stay. A baby born in the barn to this young family struggling in the middle of a desperately broken world. I can't imagine any of it was warm and cozy and certainly not simple. I bet it smelled. I bet Mary screamed. I bet baby Jesus cried as she struggled to nurse him. I bet there was blood and dirt and tears and donkey poop. And I bet she wondered what in the world she was doing there. Why her? You see, the Christmas story isn't about twinkly lights or making merry. And though the promises are everywhere, it's not about making it simple either. Not really. Christmas is about hope. Grace and truth arrived on Christmas to say, I know it's hard. I know you're struggling. I know you feel like you have nowhere else to turn. And you didn't think life would look anything like this. But I'm here now. I'm here forever. I'm here for you. Come, follow me. It's true. Christmas won't fix everything. It won't magically transform your life into one of those warm, cozy Folgers commercials. It won't make everything easier or anywhere close to what you thought it might be. He told us that this life is hard. But he promises us that we will never struggle alone and that he will be with us every step of the way. Yes, my friends, Christmas is all about hope. I love that. Absolutely. Okay, so let's move into our prayers. Uh, prayers go out for Mike and Sandy Flickinger. Mike had, uh, I think, back surgery yesterday, so please keep your prayers with him. My old, 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 old high school friend, Jamie Codwell, I think he goes by Jim now, but we called him Jamie, um, actually connected with him yesterday. I had some trucking questions, and uh, we visited for a long time, reminisced about people in school, and just had a really, really nice talk. Um, it was, you know, I haven't seen him in 40 years, I bet, at least, you know, but it was pretty cool. And anyway, he told me that he's probably, well, he's going to have a bypass surgery no matter what on the 20th of December here. He has to go on the 18th, but he's thinking it's going to be a triple bypass. And so um, I ask that you send prayers for Jamie or Jim 
and his wife, because his wife's going to be his caregiver, and they are very, uh, very close, so she's going to have a lot on her hands as well. Um, and so I'm requesting prayers for Jim and his wife um, and the medical team. So prayers go out and continue for Daryl and Kathy Nash. I'm going to actually be giving them a call today and Larry and Mary Legacy, and I'll be visiting with them hopefully today as well. Prayers go out for uh, my mom's cousin, Bobby Plumley, as he started his cancer treatment yesterday. And his daughter puts on there, cancer has messed with the wrong person. And so um, prayers go out to you, the whole family, and your medical team as well. And I think because I wrote on the back of here, I have one more act of kindness. Uh, okay. These officers went above the call of duty in our example of how we serve our community. On December 14, the officers were dispatched when they received a call about an individual in distress. After a short investigation, it was discovered that the individual was dealing with multiple health issues that were a significant cause of their stress. This was only compounded when the medical transportation service wasn't able to pick them up for a necessary appointment due to the snow on their driveway and sidewalk. The solution became immediately apparent to the officers on scene. Without hesitation, they grabbed um, any shovels they could find, shoveled the sidewalk and entire driveway, and coordinated to get the individual to their appointment. Though we don't provide snow, er, snow removal on a regular basis, these officers went above and beyond. Thank you to Sergeant Bada, Officer A. Work, and Officer M. Hansen. Um, cool thing is, is this is a friend, Sergeant Bada is a, a, a friend of mine's son. How proud should they be? God bless you guys for, for um, protecting and serving our communities. Amen on that. So um, we're going to do um, a Advent prayer here. And so let us all um, bow our head and pray. Dear Father, just as you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus, help us to clear the path in our hearts too. Show us the distractions that block us from the worship of you this Advent, dear Lord. We await your coming as we celebrate Advent, the first coming. I look toward the day when I will see your face. I look forward to the day when I see your face, see you face to face. I imagine what it'll be like. Give me a, give us a heart, Lord, that looks like you're coming on a daily basis. Help us to live our lives where we're constantly seeking your presence. Our offering to you today is our righteous life, for we know. We are only clean because of Jesus. Show us how we must be refined, purified, and forgiven today. Give us the strength to ask for forgiveness and then change our ways. We pray all of this, dear Father, in your name. Amen. Okay. Okay. That was a good one. That made me feel great. So today we're going to just kind of be um, talking about kind of like that reading I did. Some of the feelings that we have at Christmas, you know, um, Christmas is always supposed to be merry and bright. And we try, you know, but not everybody considers uh, Christmas merry and bright. Um, it can be tough for a lot. And for many people, the sights and sounds and aromas of Christmas um, bring about painful memories of heartache, disappointment, or loss. The transformation of Ebenezer Scrooge or the perfect Christmas kiss at the end of a favorite Hallmark movie may cause some hearts to flutter, but will bring tears of pain or guilt or deep sadness to others. I'm one of those people for whom Christmas brings an up and down mixture of emotions. 
I have some great memories of Christmas pa Christmas's past, especially of the Christmas music concerts at our church with the young church choir wearing our white robes with our, our red, um, I don't know what you call them, but scarves they snap in the back and then an embroidered cross on the red little scarf thing with Mrs. Wickland. Great memories of that. Um, our high school, um, elementary, college choirs that I was in. Uh, Jamie and I were just reminiscing last night. And, you know, when the boys were growing up, I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I reached out to programs that could help with gifts. Um, and then the money I had, I tried to make it as... Um, economical as I could and so I would go to Walmart and I think I've shared this with you before but we were just talking about it last night um, and I bought just really inexpensive gifts um, and looking back now you know from where I am to now but I bought a lot of inexpensive gifts so that the kids could have a lot of presents under the tree and I think my all-time favorite memory um, Jamie and I were talking is um, I would buy these they were a dollar at the time they used to have these workbooks reading math science whatever you know and for the different age groups like for kindergarten first grade second and third whatever and in um, Jamie was always really good in math he loved math and for years, I would every year I would buy him these these math uh, workbooks, and I'd always go a grade or two higher because he just loved math and was really smart at it for his age. And before the night was over, or actually after we opened our presents, Jamie would take that book, <coughs> that one dollar book, and he'd take it off to himself. And before the night was over, he completed that book. I mean, I don't know, maybe dumb memory or whatever, you know, but, um, and then Jay, you know, I would buy, um, I would buy maybe one video game and one movie so that Jay and Jamie could share it because they were expensive at the day. And, and then Jay would immediately turn on the Christmas movie. So we had Jay over here contently in a Christmas movie and Jamie over here kind of halfway watching the Christmas movie and doing his math book. That's a really good memory for me. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I I also, um, you know, remember before we had apps on our phone and um, digital downloads and all that, I um, always had playing in the background uh, Christmas CDs um, of, the, of the good old timers. Um, Bing, Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, Johnny Mathis, Dean Martin, Burl Ives, and then uh, one more, and I cannot think of his name. Oh, and then, of course, we had Mariah Carey, you know. Um, but we always had those every single year playing in the background. I was one that liked to start playing Christmas music and getting ready to decorate the day after Thanksgiving. And then when, when my kids were small, uh, we would enjoy going for rides around the neighborhood and town to see all the lights and decorations. And, of course... It, some of you remember me from way back. I always used to go big outside. Um, my yard was filled with Santa's snowmans and every other Christmas character that that there was. Um, because lights and decorations just can bring so much joy, right? But you know, some of my some of my most painful memories are also of Christmas's past. I remember being a single mom working three jobs just to make sure my kids had presents under the tree and as I mentioned signed up for community programs for my kids to you know, receive Christmas gifts and then I just told you I spent my money on under five dollar gifts at Walmart so they'd have a lot of presents under the tree and we were all happy you know and even Jamie just said last night when he was texting me he goes mom he goes it wasn't about how much money you could, you know, spend. Matter of fact, just let me, let me pull that up and I'm going to read it to you if I can. Um, he says, um, 
Well, first of all, he had texted me. He's he's watching Frosty, Rudolph, and all that stuff, you know. And he said, Mom, suggest a Christmas special that I should watch tomorrow. And so we talked about that. And he said, our Christmases as a kid were incredible, Mom. I hope you know that. He said, like the decorations and food and gifts. This is funny. The only part that sucked was we had to do all of the activities on Christmas Eve before we could come home and eat and open gifts. And we'll talk about that. That was our tradition. And then he said, I didn't ever think uh, of Christmas of about money. I, uh, I couldn't, uh, let's see. Oh, or that I couldn't have something, just so you know. I always thought everything was possible. Um, and then I, he shared, we shared some more memories and he said, yeah, mom, you're a rock star as my mom, for real. He goes, I loved all of those things. Um, and of course now, you know, reminiscing on it, trying to find the true reason of the season. Um, we did share that too, and we'll talk about that, but I do remember being a single mom being worried about providing for my kids for Christmas. Um, but uh, we were, you know, we were all happy, but we're, you know, we're, we're kind of talking about my, my painful memories, but yeah, we were all happy, the kids were all happy. Um, but then Christmas break would end and they would return back to school to talk to their friends about what they got from Santa. So other kids received multiple DVDs, electronics, name brand clothes. And, and um, my kids talked about their math workbook that they completed in one night. The pain was real. And I know it shouldn't have been, but it, it was real. Um, but sometimes Christmas can be f filled with pain as well, and many reasons. I mean, the pendulum of emotions that swings widely at this time of the year. I mean, what is a person to do if the inner response to all the joy, joy, joy sounds of Christmas is deafening um, to a cry of pain, pain, pain in the soul? I mean, I don't have a formula which will take away the pain, but I do have a suggestion that I think will help all of us work through it. Um, and this is my reflection of when I struggled with pain with my kids back then, but let's spend this Christmas season giving focused attention to the life's truth that we learn at Christmas, especially in our moments of pain. The real reason of the season, that's what we should really be focusing on. It shouldn't be about the presents or the meal. You see, Christmas teaches us that God is the God of the universe, the God who gave us the breath of life and loves us. I mean, we may feel sometimes that no one really loves us, but the fact is in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. How much more can he show you that he loves you? Because of his great love for us, God the Son took on human flesh in order to take care of our greatest problem and our greatest need, our sin. And we may feel, like I said, that nobody really loves us at times. And this season may create feelings of loneliness. But the fact of Christmas is that we are never alone. We are infinitely loved by God and we celebrate break Christmas as proof of that love. And there's a lot of things that can bring us pain this time of year. Um, not being able to celebrate with a loved one. Maybe we just lost a loved one this past year. Um, even worse, not that it's not bad at any time, but <clears throat> even worse is um, a loved one that's lost around the holidays. And, you know, sometimes we have visions of sugar plums in our head. But the holiday season never turns out sugar plums. <laughs> so there's a lot of different emotions. You know, then there's other. I don't want to dwell on the negative all the time. But then there's other people that are just love it. They love the noise. They love the traffic. They love the Christmas shopping personally in the store. 
Um, they love all the decorations. They love getting ready for family to come. You know, all of that stuff. Um, so it's a roller coaster of, of emotions. But Christmas teaches us that we don't have to have everything perfect. We don't have to be good enough to earn or merit any blessing from God. In fact, we can't, my friends. You know, sure, we probably all have ghosts in our past and messes in our lives. And some of us, a complete mess, right? But what matters to God is that Jesus' life was perfect. And when we trust Jesus as our Savior, God credits his perfect life to us. He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 We may feel condemned by others, but the fact of Christmas is that in Christ we are accepted as God's children, all of us. And Christmas celebrates that God is on our side. And finally, Christmas teaches us that God is never late and never forgets. We read in Galatians 4.4, 4, When the right time came, God sent his son. Think of the long centuries that faithful Jews had looked and hoped for their Messiah to come. God had promised, and God is never late. He is right on time, his own time. And no matter how we feel, the fact is that God sovereignly controls his world. And whatever comes or has come or will come into our lives comes to accomplish his good purposes for us. That's faith. That's hope. The fact of Christmas is that in the fullness of time, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And we can trust that. At just the right time, God will be right there with us. No matter where we are or what we are feeling, at Christmas, we celebrate that God is with us. Emmanuel. Amen. So I was just going to tell you, I was thinking about one thing, and I don't know what traditions you guys have, but Again, I remember a tradition, and this was when I was growing up, and then I carried it on with my kids, but, um, <laughs> okay, so the real reason of the season, right? And I don't know if you guys remember, but we always went to church on Christmas Eve. I mean, the Christmas choir that I was in and my kids were in performed. Um, we had the Christmas programs that we attended, whatever, right? Well, Christmas Eve is when we open the presents from, you know, mom and dad or whatever. And then Christmas morning, we had just a couple presents from Santa. Um, but Christmas Eve, oh man, it was hard with the kids. They were so excited about opening their presents that they're forgetting the real reason of the season. And that's up to us to make sure that they never forget the real reason of the season, but we've all done it, okay? But I remember if I go back to my uh, younger years, we weren't rich when I was uh, a little girl. My mom had made me a Christmas dress. Beautiful, long to the ground, um, deep red Christmas dress. And I think I wore that thing for probably three years to Christmas. But we always, always, always went to the Christmas Eve service. I think we went to the 531. And then we had to come home, or we came home afterwards, and mom finished cooking, or I finished cooking, because I had the same tradition, and the kids are just going crazy, right, because they want to open presents. And then we sat down to the family meal, and we prayed, you know, in the beginning and at the end, and then, worst thing yet, we cleaned up the kitchen, all before we opened the presents, right? Oh, man, I'll never forget those days of kids just nuts you know but when I look back I I smile I smile that we paused we paused to go to the church and hear the word of the Lord we paused before um, when we when we ate to pray before and after the meal and we paused before we opened the presents um, 
So anyway, good memories. Um, just to let you know that this Sunday we will be talking about the Christ Candle at church. Hopefully the iPad works. Um, and secondly, my uh, the Christmas sermon I've been working on um, is about an old-fashioned Christmas. It talks about um, how we perceived our Christmases when we were young or when our kids were young and, and kind of what Christmas has kind of evolved in today. Um, maybe? Has it? Or hasn't it? We're going to talk about that, though. We're going to reminisce. We're going to reminisce as well. And um, I'm really excited about, about Christmas Eve. So anyway, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. So God bless Coffee with Christ. Because um, thank you for being here for me. I've been in the house for uh, four days now. And um, this just really helps. Helps me feel like I'm connecting to people. So God bless you guys. Um, and until next Wednesday. And I think next Wednesday will probably be our last Coffee with Christ before Christmas. So um, God bless you. Have a great, great weekend. Stay safe and warm and bye for now.